Hello viewers, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are going to talk about fluid mechanics in this particular series. And specifically in this video, we will talk about what is a fluid. It is very important to understand what is a fluid before you move on to the complicated equations those govern either fluid statics or fluid dynamics. In the last lecture, we talked about different terminologies related to fluid and those were fluid dynamics, fluid mechanics, fluid kinematics and all. I suggest you watch that particular video, it will give you preliminary idea. Now we start talking about fluid. What is a fluid? In a layman language, fluid is a substance that can flow and it could be a liquid or a gas. But in a more technical language, it should be mentioned that a fluid is a substance which deforms continuously under the influence of a shear stress, no matter how small the shear stress is. So this is the technical discussion. Now in comparison, how a solid behaves, if we apply a shear stress in a solid, then it will deform, but again it tends to come back once the shear stress is removed. For example, we say we have a rubber block and we apply a shear stress on the top surface of the rubber block what will happen the rubber block will deform and again it will come back to its original position once we remove that particular shear stress that means solid is behaving like under a stress a strain is happening and again when you remove the stress the strain is going back and it is getting original shape but obviously if the phenomenon happens if the applied shear stress falls in the elastic region. So we'll talk more about this in solid mechanics. Now coming back to fluid mechanics. So here we have given a small animation. So this is related to solid stress. We apply a shear force on top surface and from initial position it goes to the so this is the initial position. Once you apply the shear force it becomes like this. Again if you remove the shear force it becomes like that. So this is how it behaves if it is a solid. Now in uh, liquid or in fluid what happens? We apply a constant shear force but with respect to time it keeps on deforming like this. So at T1 the uh, deformation was indicated by this line. At T2 it is by this particular line and at T3 again deformation. That means as time progresses the fluid is keep on deforming. And this is showing the nature or this is showing the material is a fluid. If you apply a shear stress and continuously it deforms with respect to time, that is a fluid. Now if I give you a very simple example, suppose you have a stagnant water kept in a bucket. Now you just touch the water surface. What will happen? The water keep on flowing or there is disturbances and the disturbance keep on moving with respect to time. So this is the very nature of a fluid. Now going to uh, another example or very simple example. So this is a solid material. So this is the original shape after applying shear. It is getting deformed and it is, uh, it is attaining this particular distorted shape. Again removing force going back to the original shape. But what happens suppose uh, this is one example which is happening in a cone and plate viscometer. So what is that? There is a cone conical shaped tip and there is a plate. In between we put fluids and what happens? We rotate this particular cone and when we rotate it is basically applying a shear stress on the liquid and as we know once it apply a shear stress on a fluid it will keep on deforming and so this particular space is the deformation zone and based on the nature of deformation the uh, a particular fluid property can be measured but i just wanted to show this is an example where we give a shear stress to a fluid and we can actually see a permanent deformation or continuous deformation of the fluid now few questions uh, I just noted down in order to understand fluid and also the differences with the solid. So the first question which I took is can solid always resist shear, shear stress? 
the answer is no a solid resist shear stress if it is falling in the elastic limit if you apply more shear stress then you can see a permanent deformation there also and that deformation is called plastic deformation so this particular example suppose you are uh, you are you are elongating a particular rod and after some time we see necking so necking is a permanent deformation and it happens when the applied force is very much now another another question uh, does fluid keep on deforming under applied shear stress if so then how long so in the in the last slide we talked about no matter how small a shear stress is there will be continuous deformation of the fluid that means there is a time history at t1 some deformation t2 deformation t3 deformation now my question is whether this t1 t2 t3 goes up to infinite or after some time it stops the answer is in real fluid it does not deform continuously after some time again it come back, comes back to the stationary state and but for ideal fluid that means ideal fluid is something which 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 shows you continuous deformation even at t equal to infinite you keep on seeing deformation but all real life fluids are not ideal and it actually stops after some time if it stops early then we will say it has high resistance and that resistance is called viscosity that means resistance to flow in fluid is termed as viscosity so time time information of fluid deformation originates a physical property which is called viscosity we'll talk more about viscosity in upcoming lectures but we here want to talk about how exactly uh, where exactly this particular property originates and we understand that time history talks about the viscosity like few examples we have given here you can see different fluids are kept in test tubes and you can see this particular fluid is flowing very nicely whereas these two are not coming out and uh, this is coming like this so it those fluids basically have different viscosities that means different time information of uh, of fluid deformation or fluid flow and that is why some fluids may come early uh, if it has less viscosity some other fluids may take more time to fall and this is because it has a higher resistance to flow or higher viscosity so we uh, understood what a viscosity is in a very run in a very very normal manner but we did not talk much about the technical aspects of viscosity now coming to the next question what is uh, that does fluid can resist normal stress so in all the uh, all the books and on internet we keep on seeing that fluid is a substance that cannot resist shear stress but we don't see much about normal stress so i thought that i should also talk about what happens if we apply a normal stress to a fluid so here is the answer uh, fluids uh, are of two kinds one could be liquid and gas so what are the basic differences molecular differences among these three solid is something where the molecules are very close to each other and the intermolecular forces among the molecules are very high in liquid there are intermediate spaces and that is why uh, it can still deform and in gas the molecules are far away from each other so there is very weak interactions or weak forces between two gas molecules now just try to imagine what happens if we try to push this liquid normally uh, as there are vacant spaces in this liquid there are vacant spaces if we keep on pushing then those molecules will try to come closer to each other so there is a little tendency to def uh, i mean uh, uh, of having permanent deformation even if we apply a normal stress so here this example is given suppose this is the solid material we try to apply a normal stress there will be a uh, very little or no deformation but in case of liquid if we apply very high pressure very high force then there will be slight deformation 
or slight displacement, but that will not be much because even in liquid, the molecules are very close to each other. But what happens if we apply a piston, normal force, on a gas, as the gas molecules are very away from each other, so it will show more deformation or more, uh, I mean, uh, displacement because there are scope for the gas molecules to come close to each other and reduce the volume and that is why uh, these three behave differently. So uh, coming back to the question, does fluid can resist normal stress? Yes, no, maybe. Suppose if it is a liquid, say water, you apply very small amount of force, then it will be able to resist. But if you apply a very high amount, maybe in water also there will be certain deformation. But generally it can resist or cannot resist normal stress. But in case of gas, even it cannot resist normal stress. But for shear stress, all gases and liquids cannot resist shear stress. So I hope you could understand these three aspects. Now, uh, I want to talk uh, something about viscosity and density. So, what happens uh, uh, if, uh, if a fluid has viscosity? Suppose this is a pipe, uh, uh, water is flowing inside the pipe. When it starts flowing from the inlet, all the layers of water having same velocity. But once it goes inside the uh, pipe, what happens? The fluid which is nearer to the solid star surface that tends to stop and there is a relative velocity uh, comes into picture while the fluid flows and this relative velocity originates because of the property which is called viscosity. So here one example is given say those are the velocity vectors and uh, in, in between two layers we have a gradient that means uh, this velocity vector is having higher magnitude and this one is having lower magnitude. So we take a gradient that is del u del y. So along y direction if we shift uh, dy distance how much velocity change is taking place. So that is the significance or physical significance of the gradient. So this gradient is basically proportional to the applied shear stress or in a in a in a in a opposite language if we apply more shear stress there will be more deformation and the proportionality constant is called nothing but viscosity we'll talk more about this particular terminology in this lecture we just in we are just initiating the discussion now coming to density so what is density density is basically mass by volume but in a layman terminology uh, because this mass by volume could be different at different locations for a single fluid uh, one example i have taken suppose there is a boiling water so in boiling water when you start boiling at every position heat is not going uniformly so what will happen wherever heat is going more there the density will come down and in other locations where the temperature is less the density might be higher. So if I take different locations at different, uh, I mean different points at different locations in this fluid, there will be different delta M by delta V that is mass by uh, volume and that determines the density which could be different at different locations. So in, 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 in differential language, density is limit delta V tending to zero del M by del V. I hope the, you understood the concept that density could be different and that's why we should be defining it in a differential manner. Now coming to few examples of those physical properties. What it does? Uh, in real life we see few examples like this is called viscous fingering. So there are two fluids having different viscosities and we want to flow one fluid on top of the other. So two fluids are trying to flow on each other having different viscosities, there we uh, generally come across this kind of phenomena. This is called one kind of instability, fluid instability, why it happens, we'll be talking about this in the Fluid Mechanics 2 series, but here we just want to motivate you by showing few pictures, what are the effects of viscosity, this can give you very nice effects, like what are the effects of density, one example of density stratification, that means 
uh, if you see uh, Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, they do not mix with each other. And the reason behind is these two guys are having different densities. The density is very different so that they cannot mix with each other. And another example, uh, so this is Atlantic and specific uh, ocean example. We also have similar example in our country, India. So this is in Triveni, Ganga and Yamuna where uh, they try to meet but they cannot meet because again the density of Ganga and Yamuna is different and that is why you see a stratification uh, near Triveni and uh, this is uh, another example of a density effect. Uh, one more example I have taken here. So this is Dead Sea. What happens in Dead Sea? The density of water is so high that you can even float on the uh, Dead Sea water surface. And people, you, you might have seen this kind of pictures on social media that people are uh, actually sleeping, uh, lying down on the surface of the Dead Sea. And this happens why? Uh, because of the high density, you already know the Archimedes principle. So you can go back and search what is Archimedes principle. So it gives a buoyant force from the bottom to the top and it actually uh, helps lifting a person on the surface of the Dead Sea. I hope uh, this particular lecture gave you some glimpses of what is a fluid, what are the properties, for example, density and viscosity. We'll keep on moving with uh, further proceedings of fluid mechanics in the upcoming video. Thank you very much for your support.